John and Mary were each paid X dollars in advance to do a certain job together. They were each paid X dollars, each of them. So John was given X dollars, Mary was given X dollars. Now, when I read X, um, as soon as I see variables in the question, right? one instinct is anyway, I'm thinking in terms of algebra then, but also that's taking me away from understanding. What I like to do initially is, in my mind, I'm just thinking they were each paid some amount, some number of dollars. Whatever that amount is, I don't know. John was paid some money, Mary was paid the same amount initially. Right? So that's all I'm thinking right now. I'm not really worried about the term X. John worked for the job on the job for 10 hours and Mary worked two hours less than John. So John worked for 10 hours, Mary worked for eight hours. Two hours less, this much I can do right now. Mary worked for eight hours. Cool. They both got equal money initially and one guy worked for more time. That's all I know so far. If Mary gave John Y dollars, a new number now. Earlier was it was X, now Y. What is going on here? If Mary gave John some money, some amount of her payment, so that they would have received the same hourly wage. Hmm. This is pretty heavy. Let's make sure we get what's going on here. So Mary gave John some amount of her payment. So first of all, first of all, that's already telling me that Y is less than X. Of her payment, right? What was her payment initially? X. Of that payment, she gave some money to John. So if she got, let's say, $100 initially, she could have given at most $100. So we could be like that. Right? She couldn't have given $110. She's not giving money from her pocket of her payment. So anyway, I know Y is less than X. That's one thing. Is it relevant here? Is it, will it help me answer? I don't know. But it's something I'm understanding. Hmm. So how much money? So that they would have received the same hourly wage. Aha. What does this mean now? Well, John worked for 10 hours. Mary worked for 8 hours. So Mary looks like a fair person. She's like, John, you've worked longer than I have. It doesn't, it's not fair that we both make the same money. Initially, we both got XX, but you worked two hours more. So here, take some of my money. How much money? So much money that then hourly wage is the same. Hourly wage. Basically, John gets 10 times hourly wage. Mary gets eight times hourly wage. That hourly wage is the same for both of them, right? You get paid for 10 hours. I get paid for eight hours. Here, take some of my initial payment. So that per hour, we make the same money. Overall, are they making the same money? No. John is now making more money. But it's fair because John is working more, more time also. That's what Mary has done. So if Mary did this, what was the dollar amount in terms of Y that John was paid in advance? In advance. So basically before this transfer, before Mary gave some money to John, how much money did John have initially in terms of Y? You know, initially John had X, Mary and John both had X. So basically the question is asking, what is X in terms of Y? That's the question. <laughs> Before I get into solving this one, tell me, has it ever happened with you when you're solving a question, whether GMAT or maths before that, let's say the question is asking, what is the younger brother's age? Let's say you solve the question, uh, you calculate the elder brother's age and you forget to do that last step of figuring out the younger brother's age. And then you mark the answer as the elder brother's age. Hmm? Let's say the question is asking for the value of B. Basically, you solve for A, you forget to figure out B in the end. And there is an option of the value of A also. You end up marking that. Ever happened with you? Very common, right? So again, goes back to what I talked about, what I uh, said about silly mistakes earlier, that we, we should be thinking about what can I do in my process to make sure such things don't even happen again. So along the same lines, I recommend you create a circle like this at the beginning itself to be clear about what your objective is. Do this for every question. Right? If you're waiting, I will make do this only for the question in which I, I can get confused, then you will never do it. Right? Then anyway, it becomes an additional decision point. Can I get confused here? Can I not get confused here? Let's get rid of that. As a process, let's put our objective in a big circle at the top of our rough sheet for every question. What is X in terms of Y? Something like that. So that that whole chance of getting confused, are they'd ask for elder brother, not younger brother. They'd ask for B, not A. That whole uh, chance of making that mistake goes down significantly. So this is what I mean by doing something within the process, right? This is one example. I'll, I'll highlight a few more also. Hmm. So we've got the question. All right. We've understood the story. Let's get into it. We'll discuss a couple of approaches. First, so we're talking about John and Mary. Initially, they both had X dollars each. That was the initial story, initial situation. And then what happened after the transfer? John had X plus Y and Mary lost money. So Mary had X minus Y. 
Hmm? So I think Abhijit, you made a mistake here. One guy's total becomes x plus y, the others becomes x minus y. Doesn't remain x. This is now their total income. Total income for 10 hours versus for 8 hours. And we know that the hourly wage is has to be the same. So basically, total income x plus y upon 10, and then hourly wage for Mary x minus y upon 10, upon 8, sorry, these will be equal. So now I have an equation in x and y. My objective is to figure out x in terms of y. I can solve and figure that out. So I'm not going to stop here. I'm going to solve the entire thing. Right? I cross multiply and all that. I take y's on one side, x's on one side. Eventually, I get x equals 9y. So the answer is E. Hmm? This is one approach. I think everyone who mentioned how you solved, I think everyone solved this way. Hmm? So the key here was, I think, or, or a very important part was understanding what this portion here is saying, what is actually happening. Okay, this is one approach. I'll discuss one or two more. And then if you have any questions, we'll take them. Hmm. Now, um, for this approach, just focus on me in the camera, let the screen be. Let's try to understand what happened. Before the transfer, they both had equal money. They both had X. After the transfer, Mary had Y dollars less than before. John had Y dollars more than before. So after the transfer, the difference between John and Mary was two Y dollars. First of all, anyone unclear about this? That after Mary gave some money to John, the difference between their total incomes was two Y dollars. Okay. Now, why was this difference of two Y dollars there? Why did John earn two Y dollars more? Because John worked for two hours more. Right? Overall, they wanted same hourly wages. So John made two Y dollars more for those additional two hours of work. So for those additional two hours, specifically for those additional two hours, how much additional money did John make? Can you tell me? For those additional two hours, John made two Y dollars. For two hours, two Y, Gunan. Right, he worked for 10 hours. He made two Y dollars more than Mary who worked for eight hours. So for those additional two hours, John made two Y dollars more. For two hours, he made two Y dollars more, which means that per hour, he made Y dollars more. Right? For two hours, two Y. So per hour, Y dollars. Now realize it's not like for those additional two hours, he was getting a different sum. He was getting a different salary, wage. So wage. It's not like over time was 1.5 times or anything like that. It was the same wage throughout. Mary made the same wage per hour for eight hours. John made the same wage per hour for 10 hours. Right? So for two hours extra, John made two Y dollars extra. That means per hour, John made Y dollars. This will be true for those additional two hours also. This will be true for the entire 10 hours, each, each of those 10 hours, each of those eight hours also. So basically, their hourly wage, now I know, is Y dollars per hour. Anyone unclear about this? How did I figure this out? Based just on the fact that John got two Y dollars for the additional two hours. Therefore, Y dollars per hour. That's the hourly wage for both these guys. The hourly wage is the same. Their hourly wages are Y dollars per hour each. Hmm. How does that help us? Hourly wage is Y dollars per hour. John worked for 10 hours. So John overall made 10 Y dollars. Remember, my objective is how much money did John have initially in terms of Y? That's where I'm headed. So initially, how much money did John have? Well, eventually John had 10 Y dollars, eventually after the transfer. So before the transfer, how much did he have? Well, he got Y from Mary. So I subtract Y from 10 Y. That leaves me with 9 Y. Eventually he had 10 Y minus Y means 9 Y. That's the answer. That's the second approach to get to the answer. I have a lot of text on the screen, but think about it. I actually didn't need to write anything down. This whole approach was based on, okay, I didn't need to write a lot, lot of things down. The whole approach was based on the understanding that for the additional two hours, John made two Y dollars, which means he made Y dollars per hour. Mary also made Y dollars per hour. Y dollars per hour for 10 hours, John made 10 Y dollars minus the money that Mary gave him minus Y for initially John had nine Y dollars. Done. This is one approach. Hmm? Discuss one more. When there are a lot of variables, one approach we can use, I've talked about this in the pre-session work also, is we can start with numbers. So in this case, I'm going to start with, okay, I'm going to discuss it two different ways. First is, let's say 
I'm going to start with the value of hourly wage. Let's say both these guys made $10 per hour each. $10 per hour is the hourly wage. So what are the total amounts? Well, Mary worked for 8 hours, John worked for 10 hours. So 10 times 10, 100, and then 8 times 10, 80. That's how much money they have. Eventually, total money. Before the transfer, they both had equal money. After the transfer, one guy has 100, other guy has 80. Before the transfer, they had equal money. So how much would they have had before the transfer? The middle value, middle between 100 and 80. So before the transfer, they would have both had 90 and 90. Right? If after it is 180, one guy went up by that amount, the other guy went down by the same amount, before the transfer, it would have been 90, 90. This is nothing but the value of X. This is the initial amount. And if they made $10 per hour, now also realize, what is this 100 minus 90 or 90 minus 80? This is nothing but Y. This is the value of Y. Mary gave Y dollars to John. So from 90, Mary gave $10 to John. Right? So Y equals 90. Mary would have given $10 to John, which is equal to Y. So the question is, what is X in terms of Y? In other words, what is 90 in terms of 10? 90 is 9 times 10. So this also helps me understand the answer is E. First of all, these three approaches, anyone unclear about any aspect? Let me discuss one more. I'm going to try it with you right now. I haven't tried it before, just thought of it. So let's see how it goes. What if I assume Y equals $10? I'm starting afresh. Hmm? Mary gave John $10 initially. Let's think about that. Hmm. Oh, how does that help me? So then John had X plus 10. Mary had X minus 10. And then X plus 10 upon 10 upon X minus 10 upon 8. These are equal. Uh, this kind of goes back to the first approach only. Just that instead of Y, I'm using 10 here. Right. So it's a little bit different, not very different. I could solve 8x plus 80 equals 10x minus 100. Uh, 2x equals uh, 180x equals 90. So x equals 90, y is 10. So that tells me 90 equals 9 times 10. Same thing. This also leads to the same answer. Take care. All right. So one was this question. The other was the whole idea of multiple approaches. Like I said earlier also, that will be the theme for all of point. We are always asking two questions. One, how can I make my current approach more efficient? And two, can I think of other approaches? Maybe one of the other approaches is more efficient than this approach. Now, I talked about comfort level, fluency. If we are only anyway comfortable with algebra right now, anyway, our go-to approach for most questions will be algebra. That is fine. But if we are not even trying to develop other approaches, then always our comfortable approach will remain only algebra. How do we get to a stage eventually where the default approach is not algebra in our brains? <coughs> By developing comfort with other approaches. Right? If I'm only comfortable with one approach, then anyway, I will always gravitate towards it. So if I force myself to try other, other approaches also, then with time, perhaps I will get comfortable with other approaches also. With time, I will reach a stage where I don't need to force myself, but naturally I notice, Are yaar, why do I need to use algebra here? I can just notice all this logic and done. But to get there, we have to go through this struggle. And I will call it a struggle. Where you anyway first do things you're comfortable with, but then you force yourself to do also do things that you are not today comfortable with. We need to do that. 